What's up, guys? How are you doing uh, back at home? Uh, we are in the first uh, episode of the podcast, Traders Talk. With me, Daniel Rand. What's going on, Daniel? Hey, Mickey. How are you doing? Hope you all are enjoying your weekend. Hope you guys aren't too hungover like me. Um, let's, let's have a great podcast today. We have some good topics for you guys. It's going to be our first podcast, so we're going to break down more of also, what is the podcast? What's our goal for the podcast that we're going to cover? Mm -hmm. But for today, we have some great topics. We're going to talk about who we are, you know, why you should listen to us, how we trade, how we got started in trading, our history in trading. So our different ups and downs, our learning curves, as Mickey loves to talk about. Then we're going to break down in our second topic, how you guys can get started too. So all these content is always about how much money I'm making or my awesome Ferrari. <laughs> So today we're going to talk about how you guys can actually achieve something and get started in actual tips, you know, calls to actions. None of this, you know, bullshit, you know, uh, nice feely crap, but, you know, follow my alerts. No, we're going to break down to you guys in bullet points exactly what you need to do to get started in this business. None of the, none of the fluff, none of the feel goods, none of the crap. No, yep. the, the thing is, um, even if you're not new to trading and you've already been trading in like three months, six months, maybe even two years, and, and you not succeed uh, yet, okay, you didn't uh, reach your target, then the stuff that we're going to give you here probably can give you an, a better start, a, a new start for your trading. So even if you're uh, not really new to trading, but you want to start you, a new path, definitely stick around for that. So uh, let's start, Daniel. I want to add one thing to Mickey, uh, right. this podcast, I'll say this in a meaner way. It'll give you a nice kick in the ass that you might need to succeed. So who we are, uh, Mickey, you want to go first because you have nearly double the experience I have as far as years, years goes in trading. So cool. So um, I'm Michael, for those of you who don't know, and I've been trading for the last uh, total of 15 years now. I started... Um, Mostly by myself, I learned from uh, book, I read books and uh, uh, videos, anything that was online. Uh, it wasn't so many as today, you know, the last 15 years, every, everyone that uh, finished like a, a book or a, a, a beginner course going online on YouTube and started uh, saying and telling how to trade, teaching how to trade. And basically, uh, Back in the days, there was uh, very little uh, information online, at least. And well, I took anything that I can grab and started uh, building myself, um, teaching myself mostly because I didn't have any mentor. That was uh, a rough bet that we will get to later on. So I want to say something, Mickey. Yeah. The fact that you have, like today, I'm a younger person. I'm in, I'm almost 22. And I've been trading since I was 15. So I've seen the industry change, not as much as you, but a lot. And I can tell you in the last couple of years, the amount of content and training education has skyrocketed. And this can probably leave everyone lost and confused. You know, where do I start? Where do I go? And I think in your end, when you had so little tools and only the professionals who were like teaching as a hobby were, you know, in the industry compared to now where every idiot and his mother, I'm sorry for the language, is opening a trading school and trading content and Instagram and signals that, a beginner can get lost and you know the classic problem analysis paralysis so our goal right now is to give you guys what we had which is just the, the main what you really need to know none of the crap none of the bullshit none of the extra softwares that you don't need but they think you need so they can sell more stuff so true as far as i go um i started trading on a platform called metatrader 4 i'm sure some of you will know what it is metatrader 4 is for cfds and when I was 15, I stopped going to school to continue trading. I don't recommend that. Um, later on, I got myself an internship at a brokerage firm. Uh, Mickey actually worked there like a couple of years before I got there. For, and then I worked there for a year. Um, I learned some basic stuff, did a lot of recommendations, did some trading for myself. It was pretty nice. Um, it was a nice experience. I made some contacts. And then I, I left. then I left that place to trade for myself for a little bit. It was kind of nice. I, I made some money. I didn't make a fortune or anything. I'm quite young. And then I uh, went to trade at a prop firm. I worked there for a little bit, helping other traders and helping to manage. 
until I eventually left. And then I, I took some time off of trading. And then I unfortunately injured myself in mixed martial arts and I couldn't trade for the past two years because of surgeries and complications and other stuff. But right now I'm back trading uh, thanks to Mickey's and Mickey's guidance and helpful. Thank you, Mickey. Cool. Um, Mickey and I met at a prop firm in Israel, uh, as Mickey would call it, an, a Nostro firm. So for you guys who don't know, a prop firm is a company that will will fund traders, but not only fund them, they'll educate them, teach them strategies, give them technology, software, guidance. And then when those traders, if they're good enough, if they achieve good levels and targets in the demo, and if they show interest in trading, like actual interest, the company will then give those traders its own capital to fund. Now you're probably asking yourself, that sounds like a hedge fund. Well, technically, yes, a hedge fund does fund traders. Actually, now hedge funds are doing a lot of stuff, but the difference between a hedge fund and a prop firm is a prop firm will use its own money, but a hedge fund will take outside money. So that's where Mickey and I met and Mickey and I were working and talking and Mickey was helping me get back into trading around after my surgery during that period of my life where I was quite lost. So thank you for that, Mickey. Yeah, cool. No problem. So, um, great. So we decided to combine our knowledge and experience and um, basically take it out abroad. Um, and during the years that I've been trading, I've uh, also built some uh, Nostra teams like this one that um, Daniel uh, talked about. And um, I was the head of the day trading department, the largest uh, day, trend, day trading department here in Israel. And I got, uh, I had the chance to develop a, a software platform that is connected to the TWS interactive brokers that manage the trade and lots of good stuff that I did. And not lately, I decided that I want to go abroad and take the experience and the knowledge that I uh, have uh, and just bring it to the people abroad, not just the Israelis uh, guys. Or girls and uh, yeah so this is why we are here and the podcast uh, that we are going to launch every Sunday so um, we're actually gonna cover some big and important topics for you and like Daniel mentioned no bullshit just practical stuff that you can uh, use in order to become better simply as that and we are using those same methods, the same practical stuff every uh, single day when we're trading. So, and we know it works for us, so it will probably work for you as well. Um, other than that, for uh, for today, and the topic for today is basically how to start trading. And like I said before, even if you are not new to trading, it's still, and but you're lost. You're not reaching success yet. Um, you definitely want to uh, recalculate and understand a new path um, of trading, basically. Right, Daniel? Sorry, guys. So, yes, everything Mickey says I agree with. Um, before we get started, um, and let me break down how we got started in our journey, just to give you guys a background. I want to talk about ourselves, the individual, for a little bit, so you have an idea who we are. Um Besides trading, I would say my we're hobby different. is because we're yeah, very we, different. This is the amazing part. Me and Dickie, me and Mickey are the polar opposite of people. Like polar opposite of people. Mickey's very nice and very caring and likes to volunteer <laughs> and is a vegan and happy and a great responsible parent. I am a probably a degenerate, as anybody will tell you. And I like to like uh, you know take risks and party and go. I would say my biggest hobby is mixed martial arts. I've been doing that uh, since I was fourteen. And um, like in trading, Mickey, you said that you got into trading before it was mainstream. Well, I got into mixed martial arts before it was mainstream. I got like, this is going to be uh, scary for you. Um, um, not scary, but hard for you guys to imagine. But when I went to high school and I told everyone I was doing MMA, I was getting laughed at <laughs> for doing MMA. So uh, I, I understand what Mickey talked about versus today yeah. where the mixed martial arts community is so um, bullshit full of bullshit flying shit. Now, why am I bringing up mixed martial arts? A, it's cool and I recommend everyone do it. B, if I had to say the one thing in life that taught me how to be a good trader, it won't be my math classes or my philosophy classes or my physics classes. It's going to be my MMA classes. It will be understanding that life is hard and you have to improve and be responsible because the way I see trading is I don't see trading as an intellectual pursuit. I see it as a sport. 
like chess or jujitsu, same kind of activity, a higher IQ sport. So I want to break this down for you guys that like in any sport, there's going to be a learning curve. You're going to fail. You're going to be awkward. You're going to throw the ball weird. Now that would translate to pressing the wrong button, but these are all normal things. And if anybody's telling you that you're going to make a million dollars in a month or turn 500 bucks into a million dollars in a year, they're talking shit. Trading has a serious learning curve. And depending on your personality and who you are as a person, you're going to have to figure out how to make your trading fit you. For example, Mickey and I, Mickey's very, he likes to think and, you know, take, he likes to do reversal trading and go against the trend. Well, I like to, you know, scalp with the breakout and not YOLO it, but really go volatile and really go crazy and have fun, have fun air quotes. Well, Mickey likes to be more reversed and take bigger size and, and look at the position on multiple, uh, look at the position better for multiple lens and wait for the confirmation. And I think the two different things we have going on here will give you guys an option of where you guys want to go. Me, more of the scalping, you know, smaller time frame kind of uh, trading in and out quickly around a position or Mickey's look at the bigger picture and looking for a bigger, bigger reversal trend and moving in that kind of, you know, trading activity. Mickey, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, definitely. So uh, one of the things that we will uh, touch in a second is how to get started and in trading. So uh, basically, uh, the first thing you need to do is understand who you are, right? But we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, let me uh, add a little bit more things about uh, my past or, or the way I see things. Like I'm looking at trading as a computer game, basically. Uh, so if Daniel said like uh, other games like martial arts, chess, stuff like that, uh, I was uh, a young kid basically uh, playing games from uh, morning till late at night. I had uh, days that I didn't eat even like anything, just uh, sitting and playing the, the um, uh, what's it called in uh, English? Wolf? Uh, uh, Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. So, oh wow, um, that was that was back in the day. That yeah, was before yeah, yeah. my time. So that that was my game basically, yeah. and Counter Strike, obviously. So yeah. um, uh, the way I see trading is the same thing. I'm looking at good guys, bad guys, and uh, angles, and uh, you know, sometimes you need to uh, be patient, and sometimes you need to uh, be more aggressive. Uh, you gotta always check your ammo, and you gotta always check the. Um, the aid like the the kit aid right aim assist yeah so you gotta understand if you are ill or if you're uh, strong right now so lots of uh, tiny things that really uh, fits uh, trading and uh, gaming so if you're into that it will uh, definitely help you as well and uh, uh, i want to add something yeah. uh mickey uh, you could have added one more thing the hotkeys and the, right. being good with the keyboard is really helpful Mm -hmm. And um, if you're into like esports, like the esports psychology and training for esports, a lot of that will translate into gay, into trading psychology and how trading well. So if you're if you're if you're really good at esports, and I actually had a friend of mine who was like a competitive Fortnite player who became mm -hmm. a pretty decent trader. So just keep that in mind, guys. Take it yeah. back, Mickey. That and also uh, poker, for example. Lots of uh, good poker players are also good in trading because. It's uh, as we uh, get along, we will cover that um, most of trading is based on psychology, right? It's uh, the technical side is like 30%, uh, even less than that. Um, the way to become successful is, like I said before, knowing yourself, understanding uh, who you are and what exactly are your weaknesses and your uh, strengths, and then. Uh, use that to your advantage. So, um, yeah, I think we can uh, move forward to the main uh, topic. Daniel, you want to add anything else before that? Oh, mute. I'm sorry. Uh, nothing specifically. I think you covered it really well. I just want to say again, if anybody's telling you you're going to make a thousand dollars, in a, I mean, not a thousand, but like a thousand to a million in a month or three months with my penny stock strategy. Not that you can't make money in penny stocks or buyer floats. It's just there is a learning curve, like with any video game or anything in life. There is time that needs to be invested. You need to take this seriously. This is a career. This is not a hobby or it's not a game. I mean, it is like even it is a game in a sense, but in the sense of being a professional athlete or a professional player, you need to take it seriously. I have uh, 
I have very two good trading students who I work with, who are now my partners, um, making those who I'm talking about uh, with the algo people. They uh, they were professional poker players, like big time professional poker players, and then that translated really well into trading. So if you have like poker or video games or you know even an athlete, competitive athlete, whether it be a swimmer or MMA fighter or a boxer, I think trading would be very good for you. That's my two cents. So for today's topic, good. Daniel, mute. Mute. Yep. Was I muted the whole time? Yep. Okay, I apologize for that, guys. As I was saying, um, trading trading is one of those things that it's an individual sport. So if you're a video game player or if you're a, um, a boxer, MMA fighter, athlete, swimmer, whatever, Fortnite player, poker player, I was saying when I was muted, unfortunately, I have these two really good friends who learned trading. No, that's uh, we heard oh, that. that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So where did you not hear me on? I don't know. It was muted. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so uh, bullet points: if you're good at video games, or if you're an individual person, and but if you if you're good at losing, like that's every athlete should be. And instead of crying about your losses, you look at it as a learning opportunity. You'll do very well in trading. As far as psychology goes, that is the most important part. Being able to, when you have a lot, for example, an AMC, if you're watching this time, everybody knows that AMC was crazy to the moon, as they said, or to Pluto or something. And uh, Mickey made a lot of money and I lost $40 on trades that could have made thousands of dollars. Uh, I didn't break, I didn't break my computer. I didn't say fuck trading. I was very angry. I'm human, but that's part of the game. Even when you're a professional, bad shit will happen with other people, to you and other people will be making money. And that's how it goes. It's just how the world works. So today we're going to talk about how how to start trading tips for beginners the broker the platform how many hours to put in the learning curve why you need to focus on only three strategies mickey will tell you this when i got back from my surgery i thought i was hot shit i didn't think i needed a learning curve no i need to use only three strategies if anything only one really uh how to start trading so and besides how to start trading how do you know if you're trading well so, because everybody can see your trading, like you can open an account, but how do you know if you're trading well? Um, the stats, so journaling, whether Excel or Trade Sync or Traders View or Chart Logger, uh, an actual trading log, which can be either a software or like a Word document with screenshots, and some other things that you guys need to learn before you start trading. And most important thing is that you need education. People, trading is the only career that people think I'll get my education after I succeed money in. Would you want a doctor who says, hey, I didn't go to medical school. I'm going to do your surgery. Then you're going to pay me. Then I'll use this money. You pay me for your surgery to go to medical school. No, you would report him to the police and you would go to jail. So why would you think that this is a career where you can learn on the job? Like this is not McDonald's. This is a highly, highly sophisticated skill that you will need. Once you learn it, you'll never lose it. But you 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 can get like I had in the past that you can get worse at it like any sport. But once you understand the fundamentals of training, trading, you'll never see the market the same way again. As Mickey can can confirm, right, Mickey? Definitely, yeah. Uh, it will take you just a little bit, but as soon as you got it, it's like riding a bike. It's like uh, they can't take it from you, and you always like. Again, I've been watching charts for for the last fifteen years. Charts are basically the same. Most people will tell you that the market has changed and stuff like that. But, and maybe it does in a, in a, in a sense or like nuance, small nuances, because you have more HFT and stuff like that. But when you're watching charts every, every day, you're just uh, watching and learning and uh, understanding or finding those uh, changes. And it's become like a automatic you know you see the changes and you understand them it's like driving always comparing also um trading to driving as well you know daniel because the, the um, uh, when you're driving uh, sometimes you add into um what it's called um a cog, I forgot, uh, traffic jam so okay. right and what's happened what happened when you're uh, getting out of a traffic jam mostly most of the time, lots of most of the people will uh, put the pedal to the floor, and because they had enough of this uh, traffic jam, right? And this is exactly what happening in trading while consolidating. When it's getting out of consolidation, 
and everyone is buying, buying, buying because they want to just get out of this traffic jam. And other, lots of other good stuff that you can actually learn uh, from trading, from driving, uh, comparing it to trading. We'll cover that uh, later on. Let's start. Okay, I want to add one thing before we start. The, the market may change in a sense, but human nature doesn't change. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's a saying that goes that history repeats itself. History doesn't repeat itself. Man always repeats himself. Men, human, women. I'm just, as an example, that's the quote. So it may be different stocks. It may be different tools. It may be an HFT, but it's always the same human nature. Fear and greed and the fear of loss, the fear of missing out, the fear of losing profits. These are the forces that drive the markets. You know, the bear, bull and bear, bullish. People get bullish and then people get fearful very quickly. Markets rise slower than they these than they fall. These things will always be in the market. You can look at trading from 19. My great grandfather was trading in, 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 the, in the depression. My grandfather, great uncle was trading in the last whatever. It's the same fundamentals. Human nature has stayed the same. True. So, Mickey, you want to take Amen. it from how you want to take it from how they should get started. Yes. So this is what you need to do if you want to get started in trading. And like I said before, even if you're not new to trading, but you want to get a fresh start, basically. So the first thing you need to understand is your path. Where are you adding? What do you want to achieve? It's like, think of it as like a business, right? It's a profession. It's a business. It's like a self-employed business. So basically, it's you against the world. You got to understand how much money you have in order to invest in this business, to, uh, to build your own business. Go ahead. Can I just say one thing before you get started? Uh-huh. Please do not open a trading. I don't care how much money you have. Open a trading account. Even if you're a billionaire, open a trading account with a small amount of money. Okay. When you first start trading, you won't know what you're doing and you don't want to be yourself exposed by accident. This happened to someone in my family. They thought they were they were a very smart person. They're a very wealthy person. They thought they could outsmart everyone. They opened an account with a lot of money and they ended up losing it. I'm um, just just forewarning. You need to even if you're great, you need to start small and be consistent and build up. I don't care if you inherited a hundred million dollars. Open an account with the minimum. Anyway, take it back minimum. Take it yeah. back, Mickey. <laughs> so uh, definitely in regarding to that. So how much money you need in order to invest in your uh, in your business and what will be your expenses along the way for example if you open a restaurant right then you need to buy a restaurant or build it it will be a, a couple of hundreds of uh, thousands of dollars and then you have like the um, waitresses and um uh, you know the people that supply uh, all the foods and uh, the foods and the drink and all of that right you have workers there and so on and so on so you got to understand what are your expenses along the way for each month for example in our case in trading you have the uh, might be the trading platform the fees that you're paying for the broker the um, uh, the charts uh, platform if you're not using the, the same one for example, we'll cover that later on. And um, maybe you have like um, a management um, trading platform like I'm using, for example, or um, other stuff, maybe the computer, the screens, right? You want to day trade, the scanners as well. Uh, you want to day trade, you probably need at least three uh, screens, like computer screens. So you got to take that into consideration. The, uh, the possibly, computer. Upgrading your, possibly upgrading your internet. For some yeah, people who live in um, more rural areas, like I had to. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So with those kind of things, you want to make a list and just write them down and put the numbers beside them. Understand how much money it will cost you to open a business like that uh, as a trader. Um, obviously, how much money you ca- you bring into the table in order to trade on, right? Um, maybe... You can start with the minimum of, let's say, $3,000, but um, you need to have at least like 10 so you will have enough room to play with and, and going into two trades uh, uh, simultaneously or stuff like that. So um, make sure you got enough money on the side and do not use like loan money, right? You don't want to take money from the bank in order to trade because then the whole psychology that you will have uh, when you enter in a trade, um, 
it will you know damage your uh, results uh, when i add anything there here daniel uh also add into your excel sheet you have to pay for training education whether that be a, a courses coaching platform books you need some kind of education i it, it's beyond me how somebody can as somebody who has spent a lot of money to compete in mma with coaches and different MMA gyms and seminars and stuff, how people can think. And that's just a hobby of mine. How you think you can walk into a field like trading and just magically printing money. If it was so easy to print money, and then everyone would do it and there would be no edge and then the whole thing would fall apart in, in an hour. So you need some kind of education, even if it's not us or anyone, we don't, or just find something, a book, a course is online material. You need something to learn from. You cannot start trading. Also, do not start trading live. I don't care if you have a hundred IQ of 160. Trade on the goddamn demo and have a month to three months of profitable demo before you go live. Then you can go live with ten dollars a trade, fifteen dollars a trade, five dollars a trade. You should not be risking fifty, a hundred dollars. I know somebody was risking a thousand dollars when they first started trading for trade. Like, why the hell would you do that? You want to do small, you want to get used to it, have a psychology, get used to taking losses. Because even if you're a great trader, you're going to be losing a third of the time. If you're a great trader, you'll be losing a third of the time. A good trader will be losing more than half the time. So you have to get used to losing money. You know, trading is a job where you can go and actually lose money and do damage to yourself. Most jobs you can also, trading is not your average job. You, you Most of us are conditioned to go to an office and just to be working busy work, okay? Just pretend to be working. And that's what we associate as working. Trading is not that. Trading is a job where you need to be, it's like a sport. You need to be focused. You need to have your, your an hour to two hours of high brain activity. And that's about it. You're not going to make more money by trading 10 hours. So if you're thinking to yourself, I made I make X amount in the open in that first hour, that will not continue for the next five hours. So you have to be ready when you start trading in the, the open to the first couple hours. That's where most of the market will break this down in the future more. But trading is not a job where you make more money doing more. It's not a job where you show up. This is a job where you have to hunt what you kill. I mean, hunt what you want. Sorry for the vegan reference, but you need to hunt for your, your, your money at the end of the day. You need to go ahead and make it. No one's going to hand it to you. So if you don't sleep properly, if you don't eat well, if you don't take care of yourself, you will not function in this job. And we're just trying to warn you here. This is exactly, Daniel, I couldn't agree more. I will add something uh, in regarding that demo that you mentioned, but other than that, I uh, couldn't agree more. And um, like Daniel said, since it's a, since it's a business and since uh, you are in control of that, you got to have a super uh, developed management or and a sense of control of yourself so um uh, it's like going you decided on a diet you gotta stick to that diet you decided to go to the gym you gotta stick to that gym and so on quit smoking or whatever um so if i'm uh, going back to the sheet for example for a second write them all down by the way you can send them to us and we will check it out and add stuff uh, um, help you with that write everything down understand how much money you need in order to start the, the business and like daniel said for example uh, like courses or whatever it will take you x amount of money every uh, every month and and then you come to the uh, you come to the playing ground um much uh, much better like um, uh, I forget like i'm missing the word right now but you since you know yeah, since you know what your expenses are and since you know uh, what to expect, then when you come to trading, uh, it will be much easier because your focus is on uh, the trading and not the, oh my God, I just lost X and so on, or, and I need to buy a computer and, and that and that. You have already organized, you organized everything basically already. So um will be much uh, simple to do that trading is like any business and in every business you have losses for example my father was in real estate and every so often they would buy a house that wouldn't be salvageable or there'd be a government issue or the house would be involved in some kind of criminal activity and they'd be fucked for a year that happened to my happened to happened to my dad he had a he had this giant construction company and one of the houses there was a murder in the house and a um, hundred thousands of dollars went to the garbage because the government sold it off and you can't sell it afterwards so like in any business 
you know, um, you will take losses and that's part of the game. The, a professional, the difference between a professional and an amateur is that a professional can lose strategically and control his losses. While a professional, uh, an amateur just loses, can control his losses, has no strategy and his losses become a black hole because every trader will have losses. I'll have periods. And the name of the game is keeping the money you make and make sure you lose more, lose less than you make because anyone, anybody can buy some stocks and they'll make money. It's pure mathematics. If I buy a hundred stocks, Probably 30 to 50% of them, 30 to 50% will make me money. The question is the remaining 50%, how much am I going to lose? That's the, that's the name of the game. And that's the difference between a professional and an amateur. And people don't understand that. Our society teaches us in school, don't fail, don't make mistakes, never be wrong. It conditions us to be this perfect little uh, worker bee. That's not how you succeed in the world. You need to take risks. You need to like risks. You need to take losses and, and, and ha- be happy with it. Um, so off to our next topic broker you have to have a quality broker no crappy offshore you know one of my students told me he signed up with a broker that that wouldn't let him take money out for three months at a time i'm like well even if you don't want to take the money out that's not kosher or it's not it's pretty sketchy okay it's my money i take it out whenever i want to take it out now there will be fees to take out to wire the money out like any bank procedure but Telling me I can't do what I want with my money, unless you're the government and I'm a criminal activity, you have a, a judge order, who the hell are you to tell me what to do with my money? It's my money. So be careful of things like that. You want to look for uh, good commissions. So like very cheap. A lot of brokers are offering free commissions. And I think if you're starting out, free commissions aren't bad. But as you're a professional, you will need to pay for trading. Uh, you want a good solid platform. You don't need all the be- bells and whistles when you're starting out, but you have to make sure you have a solid platform. So whether you want to start a MetaTrader or TradingView or your broker platform like TradeStation, that's fine. But some platforms, Mickey, are we naming names on what not to use? I mean, yeah, why not? I tried using TWS for six months. And this has been the worst six months of my entire life. I didn't make money. I didn't lose money. I just didn't do anything. I was going in up and down. TWS Interactive Brokers. Now, Mickey and I both use Interactive Brokers. And we love Interactive Brokers. We know them personally. We have a good relationship with them. Um, they give us great commissions and great fills and great speed. Their platform is not usable for day trading. If you want to be a long-term investor, and that's great. You can use TWS. TWS is a software from Interactive Brokers. But if you're going to trade professionally and day trading like we do, you're going to need an actual platform. Now, Mickey uses TOS. Mickey, you want to talk about Thinkorswim? Yeah, let's cover that uh, just a little bit uh, before the platform, just a tiny bit on the on the broker. Uh, so you said a reliable broker, someone um, uh, look for a regulated broker either from SEC or from other... Um... SEC, everyone is the SEC, if you don't know. The yeah. U.S. financial regulator, yeah, or other uh, financial regulator, but make sure you are uh, trading with a broker that is regulated. Then you know it won't be. Hopefully, it won't be a problem. There are also brokers that, um, um, what's it called, like um, guarantee your uh, deposit, yes, right? For, for example, in the U.S., you have two options. Uh, a lot of it is is uh, insured by the SIPC, which is the uh, federal insurance for investment accounts. I think it covers between two hundred and fifty thousand and five hundred thousand um, dollars. You never want to get to that point because even if the government, it'll take forever to get your money back. What I want to recommend is that a pick a broker in your own country. Now, this is assuming you live in a regulated country. If you live in like Germany or the EU or America or Canada, pick your own broker. So, if you're a Canadian citizen, you go to Interactive Canada. If you're an American, you can go to your own country's broker or European, et cetera, et cetera. I would not do brokers from uh, God knows where in some offshore Cayman country. Island or stuff like that. Yeah, that's not for you guys. Just uh, some, you know, one of the mainstream countries, Canada, America, United Kingdom, Germany, stuff like European Union, even Hungary, which is in the European Union. Those are good countries to go into. Some of don't take some broker from Russia with broken English, unless you're Russian and you know them and you know better than us, but I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, you want to have good costs, uh, tight spreads, which means that the, the t- um, you, you, if you say you're going to buy at this price, you get filled to this price closely, a good service. You should have someone to call somebody to email if you have a problem. 
they should be using regulated banks. They shouldn't demand too much upfront unless they're like a big mainstream broker. You should be able to open an account with a few hundred or a few thousand dollars if you're if you're a European citizen. If you're an American, you'll have a different problem, but we'll, please contact us and we'll talk to you personally. This is a, a much complicated issue if you're an American. Uh, the platform, and yeah, a lot of brokers offer f- free platforms. Uh, I wouldn't really go down that road. So, Mickey, anything you want to add? Yeah, so um, the platform, if we're covering the platform, like uh, Daniel mentioned, TWS from Interactive Brokers is not a good platform for day trading. And again, and again, I've been a, a loyal customer or using the Interactive Brokers for years now, and I love them. That's a great broker to be with. But the platform uh, sucks for day trading. Terrible. Yeah. So what you got to do if you chose to uh, become a client of Interactive Brokers, just use a different uh, platform just for the analysis, just for the charts and the um, understanding basically the the points you want to enter and so on. Well, you have two options here. Now, Mickey and I, this is where Mickey and I personality differ. I want everything to be in one space. So one platform for everything. Besides the scanner, like I want my level two, I want my charts, my entry, everything in one place. Mickey, on the other hand, uses multiple softwares. There is no right or wrong answer. It depends what you feel like, what you want to do personally. Now, if you're an interactive brokers customer, you have two options, okay? A, you use interactive brokers and you just do the orders and just the order window, buy, sell, stop loss, whatever. And you use another platform for scanning and another platform for um, charting. Like Mickey uses Thinkorswim. Um, what I do is I use Dash Trader or Sterling Trader, which I connect my platform to my broker on their end, which is another issue. And when I do my orders in my platform, it gets sent through interactive, interactive brokers. Now, either one is fine. There is no wrong or right answer. But make sure whatever platform you're using is a solid and good platform. Make anything you want to add? Yeah, so the... So like we said, you have the trading platform that you want to have like a um, quick and easy execution right? And you want to have either on the same platform or a different platform, the charting uh, part. So uh, where you analyze the trades, so um, like the charts. So this one should have all the um, the good stuff, like uh, obviously EMA, VWAP, uh, pivot points, MACD, stuff like that, that you will use. V- um, and you want to see the chart as visual as it gets, like super clean, and cut and obviously you want to have it also um so it, uh, you will get all the quotes so you won't have like um so when you're looking at a candle you see the exact candle at the same place at the same um in other places other uh, platforms especially the view app because interactive brokers tws did not have the view app for a long time Mm. Then they got the view app and it's it's not the best view app. And the view app is probably one of the top three, top, top important indicators. So mm-hmm. really be careful. Now, if you're not trading stocks, the view app isn't that important. I mean, I don't think, does MetaTrader have a view app? Probably not. No, because no, they, they don't yeah, have volume. It's internal data. Mm-hmm. I mean, you probably could, but it probably, like it's a download, but it wouldn't be that good. Um mm-hmm. So, but be careful, guys. Your your quality platform will make you or break you. I, I, as I told you guys, I'm a pretty decent trader, but for the last six months, I haven't, I haven't, TWS has completely destroyed me. You want a simple platform, a reliable platform that will, you know, hold up over a large period of data. You need something reliable and status. You know, there's a lot of fancy new platforms out there. I don't really recommend them. They're really fancy. They're really, they're really complicated. When you're trading, you don't want this stuff. You want something basic that you can really trade quickly with. Yeah, definitely. Now, uh, if we're talking about the hours that you need to put in in order to uh, become a trader, so it's I'm jumping uh, to the beginning just uh, for a second to how to start trading and understanding who you are. You gotta understand what kind of trader you want to be. Are you want to? Are you aiming to become a day trader? Are you aiming to become a swing trader or a long time investor? Also, uh, are you looking to get uh, to become aggressive and maybe uh, make it as a profession, as a like your own uh, profession, or you want to just um, create a smaller income, like a light extra, income? Yeah, like an extra um, thousand or two thousand a month or something like that. You don't need to be like 
look, everyone is telling you you need to be a millionaire, you need to have a Ferrari. This is all nonsense. Do what fits you. If you if you're happy making a couple thousand dollars a month and that's all you want to do and all you, or, or all you can handle, that's very impressive and you should be proud of yourself. You don't need to prove anything to anyone. Okay, this is not an industry. This is not a game. This isn't an ego contest. We're not in high school. Do what fits you. Don't make your decisions based on that guy or that Instagram or him or what I'm doing or Mickey's doing. Do what you want to do, what fits you. For example, me, I told you guys, I we use, Mickey and I use two different softwares, two different styles of trading, but we get along very well because it works for us. You have to, do, but there are in that, you know, area of different things for your personality, there are certain rules you have to follow that you cannot break. For example, using stop losses or a quality platform or the view app or stuff like that. Now, when Mickey and I first started working together, Mickey was like, you need to stop using TWS. And I'm very stubborn. I'm like, no, I'm going to get TWS to work for me because I'm smart. I, I abandoned TWS about two weeks ago and it was probably my best decision this year. So this year so far. So you have a lot of, you know, thank you for that. Thank you for that, Mickey, for pushing me to dump this platform, which is goddamn failing all the time. That being said, there are rules you have to follow, but our job is to, in, in those rules, to find our own personal, our personal space in a sense, whether that's your trading. Now there are dozens of strategies out there. Find the three that fit you. So Mickey has a lot more experience teaching from I do. So Mickey, if you can tell the people how they can get started, the process, and just go like on a mini rant here, on, on, based on your, your half a decade, your decade or half a decade of teaching, what you think they should do what you know they should do. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, definitely. So in order to know which strategies you want to use you, and understanding, in, it will help you obviously understand how many hours to put in. And because like I mentioned, uh, day trading, uh, it will take you a few hours a day. You want to have, have those few hours at least like three hours that you're uh, scanning, trading, and uh, afterwards analyzing what you did. And we will get to that. So three hours a day. Um, if you're swing trading, you can do that on the weekend to uh, um, two, time, two days, like a Sunday or a Saturday, Sunday, that you're putting again uh, two, three hours just to uh, find those stocks and uh, place orders. And then along the week, you're just... Um, of fixing things like moving your stop losses and your take profits and stuff like that so it's all it all depends on how much you want to achieve and i'm not talking about money wise i'm talking about like uh, either a profession how fast you want to do it just before we got um to that podcast today i had a call from a friend of mine and he's saying he want to leave his job and and start doing trading, like start trading on uh, as a profession. And he asked me if uh, if it's um, realized, that, like realistic, that they can make uh, about four thousand dollars after six months. And then I started to explain exactly like we're covering right now. What exactly does he need to do, and um, um, how many hours you need to put in in order to uh, become profitable and in order to make like four thousand dollars a month and obviously the amount of money you need in order to do that um if we were focusing on the strategies then the reason that we're saying you need to focus on strategies but like daniel said there are a lot of lots of uh strategies out there and most of them by the way uh, work pretty good the the problem is with the the person who execute them so um don't try don't lose the the focus you got to have something that even go with one or two not even three for the beginning just understanding what the strategy is how, how exactly does it work and um the, the way you can sharpen that strategy in order to become more profitable with it. So uh, um, it's super important that you'll focus uh, there. If you decided to day trade stocks, then go ahead and day trade stocks. Don't go and learn futures and don't go and learn options and you wanna day trade US stocks, then do that. Don't do day trading on a European stocks because you're not there yet. Do that later on, but at the beginning focus. Keep your niche as tight as it gets and 
just focus on that one or two or top three strategies. Daniel, go. I want to say something. Uh, as you guys know, about a year ago, I had surgery. I, I don't know. Actually, you guys don't know this. I had serious surgery on my hand. And after after recovery and stuff, I wanted to start trading again. Uh, but I thought, you know, I was a really good trader. I worked at prop firms. I helped manage prop firms. I don't need to, you know, but even me, I had to scale back my risk. I had to focus only on three strategies, even less probably. And Mickey told me this, Daniel, you're doing too much. Trying to build an algorithm, trying to uh, trade futures, European stocks, everything at once. You need to focus, focus on trading and build yourself back up. This, this still applies to us. I mean, even after this years of trading, we still focus on what we're going to trade on our few strategies. And if we come back like any sport or take a break, we have to scale back in. So even for us, it's not like a magical tool that once you know it, you can print money. Uh, as I told my people, it's not a money printer that you can turn on. It's a business. Like every business, there'll be ups and downs and periods. And like any business, there's going to be a curve of taking losses, taking losses, profitability, then some more profitability, like any, any business. And then, you know, there is that statistic out there that 97% of traders fail. Yes, that's correct. Whatever, 90, 98, whatever. What they don't tell you is that 98% of businesses fail within the first 10 years, restaurants within the first year. So anything in life has a risk. Anything in life has a risk. This is not anything different. What is different is that you need to take education. Those 90% of people, those Wall Street betters, they have no idea what they're doing. They can't explain to you the difference between a stop order, a market order, a limit order, MOO, or uh, market on open order. They're just gambling for fun. If you want to gamble, go ahead and go to the casino. But if you want to be a serious trader, you need to follow these steps and you need to build yourself up. Now, as Mickey said with his friend, or I have friends who are like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to trading and I'm going to, I had someone tell me that they're going to turn $100 into $11,000 in a month. I was like, it's not how it's not going to work for you. He had no experience. Even if you had experience, it's not realistic. You can't open an account with a hundred bucks. I mean, you can, but it'll probably be a scam. People are, you need to, to understand this is a learning curve. Even if you're a doctor or a lawyer or engineer or gifted, you have to understand that trading will make you really screw you up and it'll make you have to learn who you are. So let's, let's move on to another topic. Also, before I continue to the, to the next topic, Trading is an outcome independence. You cannot be focused on making money. You need to be focused on any sport. LeBron James does not go to the NBA game thinking, if I make this shot, I'm making a million bucks. That's not how it works. You got to think of the process, the system, how I'm going to do it, and making good trades. You don't think about making money. You have to think about making good trades, quality trades, and following your system. You need to have a playbook and go into it prepared. Um, uh, Mickey, uh, uh, yeah. I'll add to that, uh, Daniel. You said it well. And um, exactly like like you said, LeBron James doesn't think of the money while he executes. He's thinking you know, of the the shot itself, like grabbing the ball, put it in in the basket, looking aiming through that uh, ring. Right. Uh, the same applies here. You don't go into trading thinking about the money. The money is just in an outcome of your executions. If you decide uh, well, then uh, the money will come. It's simply as that. So uh, remember that it's super important lesson. Well, there's three factors, guys. There's deciding and executing trades. There's managing the trades. And then there's your risk management. You need all three of these things to succeed. If one of these things, the risk management, the trade ideas, or the or the, man, or the management itself are not in sync and working together, you will not be profitable. There is a large education. You need to learn these three things separately and then learn how you can intertwine them. It's like MMA. If you go to an MMA gym and say, I want to do MMA, they're like, no. You got to learn how to box. You got to learn how to grapple, how to wrestle, how to do kickboxing. And then you can go to MMA. Trading is the same. You need to learn how to do your, find your trades, how to read the chart, your risk management, and then you can start trading all in sync. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't just jump into the pool because whether it's MMA or swimming, you'll get your ass handed to you, which is the truth. Okay. Now, before we'll continue uh, to the, the last one, I got to uh, remember that you mentioned a uh, thing about the demo and I got to... Okay. And I got to say my opinion on that because like we said, and this is exactly what's so beautiful about trading. There are two guys doing the same thing, but basically are different, you know? So um, my recommendation here on demo is actually working on it until you uh, become better in execution and better um, in a technical way. 
like um, knowing your hotkeys. yeah like hotkeys stuff like that but then mm -hmm. go in and put your feet in the water okay well i can even say that mickey you're right in a sense because when we started trading commission was like five dollars a trade so at your end of the day, it'd be like 20 bucks, but now commission is dirt cheap. So the argument is to start trading quicker is a lot, a lot stronger because you can even trade for free. Now I do agree with Nikki on this, but, and my main reason is that with the hotkeys, but I just don't want people, people to feel rushed that they need to start making money quickly, but not, uh, make it not because it making money, just even the risk, like $5 a trade. It's not about making money for the, for the first three months, at least it's not about making money. It's about, uh, see that you're actually understanding what you're doing, analyzing uh, the right way, managing the trade and so on and so on. So even start with a $5 risk, a $10 risk, just so you will uh, get first see uh, that you're doing well and then get to use to the point that the money is in play, like real dollars that you are taking out of your pocket and put it in the market. So as soon as you get psychology wise, uh, get to, uh, to the point that money is not an issue, it always will be, but not like a, uh, the main issue, then it will be easier to take decisions uh, based on uh, um, calculated uh, risk and not just because uh, you're winning or losing money, making or losing money. Uh, Daniel, take us to the stats. Um, the stats. Now, trading like any sport, you need statistics on your batting average, your hit loss, your punching to not getting the blocking ratio, whatever, your such hit takedown advantage, stuff like that. Now you need an Excel sheet or you need trading view. You need to understand your entries, your losses, your stop losses, your risks. And we will give you guys the strategy more in depth on how to make an Excel sheet. But for the sake of time, I'm going to give you guys um, a broader view. You need to see that your risk, you're making more than you're losing statistically over time. You need to see that you're following your strategies and that you need to see which strategies are working well, which time of the day is working well for you what kind of stocks or trading is working well for you. Some people trade low floats, which is, you know, smaller companies. Some people trade big names like Apple and tech stocks. You, there's many ways to make money. There's many ways to make money in the markets. I mean, there's 8,000 US stocks. So there's several options here. A lot of the time, Mickey and I are be trading two different watch lists and everything, nothing in common. But you need to understand that what you're doing is working and your mind will play tricks on you. For example, on AMC, last week, I thought I had a terrible week because I had a bad day trading AMC. And I was like, I'm, I'm shit at trading. But I looked at my stats. My trading isn't that bad. It's pretty good, actually. You need that. But I can show myself with data that my trading is doing well. I'm managing my risk correctly. I'm playing good stocks. I'm, I'm taking my parcels correctly. So parcels are, you know, you buy a stock. You don't want to take everything out in one piece. As the stock goes up, you want to take small pieces out called partials, you know. These are the things you need to see, you need to look at, and you need to have a history of data. That's how you know you earn the right to taste more, take more risk. You can take more risk to go from 5 to 10 to 15 to 20 to 50, not because you feel like it, because you can see on your Excel sheet or your trading view or your trading sync that I'm doing well, my strategies are doing well, I'm handling my trade. Now, you'll never have perfect trading, but you can see that 70, 80% of the time I'm doing it well. Now, there'll always be, I enter the trade by accident or I press the wrong hockey. That will always happen to you. You want to see that 80, 90% of the time I'm doing things right and I'm scaling up correctly. That's when you know you can take risk. Unless you're doing, unless you're doing, you know, especially when you first start, you're trading small size that you won't see a big equity curve. Like you won't be making that much money. So the way you know you're doing it well is based on your stats. I plan to take this much. I took this much. The stock was going to move this much. I took this much. I, I wanted to take double my risk. I took 1.8 my risk. I, I wanted to take this stop loss. I took this stop loss. That's how you know you're doing it well. Not because you feel like it or you think because you have the Excel sheet or the sheet in front of you. That's how you know you're doing your job well. Make you yeah. take it back. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And like any other sports, um, think of LeBron James, think of uh, Messi, right? Or Ronaldo. They are going to the game knowing in advance that they are, are better in those hours, those um, points on the field, right? Uh, on the left side or the right side and so on. Uh, they know exactly if they're uh, where to kick and when, where they go. Um, What's it called? The uh, goalkeeper 
is on the right, then they need to kick to the left. And all of these are basically statistics that are getting from each um, game that they take in, um, uh, playing. And as soon as you will have more and more data, then you will uh, it will be easier to understand where uh, you can improve and what works for you. And then you can keep that as well. So not just learning from uh, mistakes, but learning also from, from your success. So if you have seen that you're doing something um, the right way, stick to that and find uh, things that you can uh, just a small nuance in that you can improve in order to become better. Daniel? I wanted to add that when you're first starting for the first three months, you're going to be experimenting with different strategies and finding your style. And that Excel sheet will show you on trend following, I do better, or, you know, or in reverse, I do better. Cause you won't know, A, you'll probably forget after the fact and B, your mind as time goes on will, will change how you perceive things. So right. you won't know what you might be thinking. I'm a great reversal trader, but you might be, you might be making more money going with the trend. These are why you long, need the short. Yeah. Long, short, this kind of stocks, you need data and data is objective to show you what you're doing well. Exactly. So uh, the way you uh, can do that practically is either using like uh, an Excel sheet that you uh, got from your um, uh, mentor or whatever, or built it uh, yourself. Or the other option is basically using uh, like trade, uh, trade log, uh, trader uh, view, or what's the, the other company name, uh, Trader Sync, Sync Trader. Yeah, so um, basically what they do- Trader Sync. Trader Sync. So basically what you do, you take uh, the um, statement that you get in from the broker, uh, let's say interactive broker, and then you upload it, import it to uh, the other company, the third uh, party company. They analyze it. They got, uh, um, they take the information and analyze it and tells you exactly the, uh, what you need, um, like all the stats that you are uh, working on uh, and have. So basically this is a great way uh, to work with, but for the beginning, you can definitely start with an Excel sheet, um, quick and easy one just so you will have uh, more information. As more information you will have, that way you will become much better, uh, faster. Daniel, anything else uh, to add? Um, coming out for you guys, and as we continue with the podcast and the daily live streams and more educational videos, you'll understand more in exact terms what we are talking about. In this video, we gave you guys the general ideas. Mm -hmm. But as we go on, you'll understand more in depth and eventually we'll have courses and tutoring available. But don't even think about paying for courses right now. I want you guys to go to our live streams, our educational videos, maybe look at the trading starts for free on, on TradingView and see if this is for you. You don't have to be a trader. Being a trader does not make you a better or worse person. A certain kind of person can trade. So really think about it. Look at the charts, watch some videos, watch our live streams. And if you think that trading is for you, and after you thought about it difficult, hardly, then, you know, go down the path. But you don't have to rush. Don't rush into anything. Don't force anything. This is not a way to make money quickly. You're not going to buy a Ferrari in three months. You're not going to pay off your debt. This is a serious decision, a long road ahead of you with a large learning curve. And it will take a lot of effort, a lot of emotional pain, a lot of, you know, feeling crappy. And that's going to be forever. So if you want to go down this road, think about it hard before you do it. Yeah. Definitely, but if you decided to do that, go all in and keep focusing and doing the right things that you need in order to really become a pro. Because as soon as you get to that point, it's amazing. And there is no half-assed trader, guys. Either go big yeah. or go home. You, there's no halfway in. There's no one foot in, one foot out. You either have to go all in or all out. Because going in halfway, you'll just lose money on commissions. Either go in all the way, take the courses, buy the books, have some mentoring, have some you know, trading community, and don't trade by yourself. Either go in with the investment with a good platform, a good broker. Don't put like $500 in the account. Say, I'm going to say, fuck it and see what happens. You can do that. It's your money. You, just, you won't succeed. For the long run, definitely. Yeah, long term. The long term, yeah. yeah. All right, guys. So I hope you uh, took some uh, good advices here that you uh, that we gave. Um, this is definitely uh, the first one 
like in the first podcast, we have tons of information and good, uh, hopefully like a good content to give you every single uh, Sunday. So check it out. Don't miss that. It will be on uh, uh, YouTube, Facebook, also on Spotify and uh, other places. So uh, make sure you're watching and stay tuned. Daniel? I got nothing really to add. I think we covered it well. Cool. Um, as you guys see over time, you'll understand more. And I um, hope you enjoy the process. Yep. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, send it to us either by Facebook, YouTube, uh, comments. Make sure you subscribe and like, and uh, we'll see you in the next lesson. Take care. Bye for now. Take care, guys.